People have long wondered how the Egyptians cut and moved the gigantic blocks used for the pyramids, with some weighing in as much as 80 tons. Well, what if they didn't need to? Greetings mortals, capital date you all. I'm your host Simon, welcoming you back to the Library of Gnosis. Anybody who tells you that he or she knows how the pyramids were built are not telling the truth, because we don't know. We don't know. Graham Hancock The pyramids, their origins and construction seem to remain a mystery to the last ages, until one of French material scientists in the 1980s by the name of Joseph Davidwitz proposed a different theory. He proposed that the pyramid builders did not need to transport the block one by one to the pyramids, but rather concrete the blocks one at a time in place on the pyramids. The Vedavit hypothesis suggested that the blocks that made up the pyramids were formed by pouring them into wooden molds using a process of making a special form of concrete he dubbed geopolymer, a form of ancient concrete. And it makes sense. Just a fraction of the laborers would be needed to haul sacks of moist geopolymer compared to actually cutting and transporting megalithic stone blocks. You cannot even fit as much as a razor blade in between the blocks of the pyramids. This is sure evidence of advanced technology in our ancient past, many claim, and I have no doubt. But why overcomplicate by adding mile-long ramps into the equation? Joints between poured concrete blocks would always be perfectly accurate as a compacted moist mixture hardens against neighboring blocks. David David suggests that the polymer concrete was made from crushed limestone, clay, water and lime, a highly alkaline activator that caused the crushed limestone mixture to re reconstitute into a man-made stone. One would think that modern scientists with electron microscopes could prove in short order whether Davidovitz was correct or crazy. Michael Barsum, a professor of material science at Drexel University. Barsum, a native of Egypt, never meant to get into the study of the pyramids, but was amazed to hear Davidovitz's theory. Barsum was more amazed to find that no one had proved or disproved the idea. Borsum, along with a graduate student named Adresh Ganguly, began studying samples from the inner and outer casings of the pyramids. What they thought would be a month-long study turned into a five-year odyssey. In the end, they disproved some of David's assumptions, but proved his overall theory. Borsum believes that the Egyptians did cast a small but significant portion of the blocks in the pyramids. His electron microscope analysis indicated that the Egyptians didn't use clay in the geopolymer mixture, as Davidovitz proposed, but rather detumaceous earth, a naturally occurring, commonly found soft sedimentary rock formed from the fossilized remains of algae. And Borsum importantly disagrees with Davidovitz by suggesting that not all the blocks were cast in place geopolymer. But rather, Borsum suggests that the Egyptians used both man-made cast blocks along with limestone blocks quarried and hauled to the site in a way our traditional explanation proposes. Borsum believes that only the exterior casing blocks and the blocks at the higher levels of the pyramids were cast geopolymer blocks. This makes sense, the casing blocks are visible, so cast in place blocks with extremely accurate joints would be perfect for the exterior of the pyramids. And the blocks at higher levels of the pyramids were harder and harder to get to for quarried blocks hauled up ramps. Replacing these with cast in place geopolymer blocks made their life a lot easier. I like this idea because it shows you the ingenuity of our ancient ancestors. They did not think in the same way as we do. We use brute force to get ahead, while the ancients used more subtle means more in harmony with the universe, what the Egyptians would call Ma'at. Their technology was so different. They used sound for many things, I believe. They used simplicity to achieve complexity in a way, using resonance to their advantage, and an astounding knowledge of physics. 
Their technology is very foreign to our way of reasoning. Men like Nikola Tesla are excellent example of someone who tapped into this lost knowledge. The Wardenclyffe Tower emulated the conditions of the pyramids by having underwater aquifers, supposedly allowing for the generation and distribution of free and wireless energy. But that is a story for a different day. I am just putting forward some examples of how the ancients thought and how they used their wits. Not to mention how they caught rocks as hard as granite still remain a mystery, and especially the precision used in the carvings. But what do you think, mortal? Were our ancient ancestors more ingenuitive than we think? Perhaps way more advanced than we are today? Leave it down in the comment section below. Thank you for listening. See you next time, mortal. Remember to hit that bell button to stay notified. Subscribe for more red pill content. Do give it a like if you enjoyed it and feel free to share it. If you want to support my work, you can find me on Patreon at Library of Gnosis. You can find me on YouTube, Facebook and BitChute at Library of Gnosis. The audio versions of my broadcasts are available on Spotify as a podcast at Library of Gnosis. Music is produced by Coda.